We're back and we've missed you on this episode of Fumble Puck. We're gearing up for game four. Emotions, 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 uh, rage tweets, and, and a little bit of roster talk. Not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves and to live in the moment. Enjoy. All right, everybody, we're back. It's Fumble Puck with Ashley and Noah. It's been a little bit of a while. Ashley, how are you? I am good. How are you, Noah? I'm eating a freezy, so if I sound weird, that is why. Just a heads up. You want to know what's weirder than eating a freezy? Nice. I'm drinking a hot coffee right now on a day like today. Hmm. So I, uh, I've been working some crazy hours, which is the reason why we haven't recorded in a little while. And uh, so I finished work last night. I got home at like 3.30 in the morning and I didn't want to waste my day because I just worked like six days in a row. So I wanted to make sure I had time to hang out with the kids a little bit. So I woke up early. So now it's the afternoon. They're napping. It's Sunday afternoon right now. And uh, I decided I needed a hot coffee. But I am drinking my hot coffee out of my Montreal Canadiens dad mug. Ah, okay. Well, it is hot outside, so it's a little bit strange. Two, I could have texted you because I was talking and turning till three thirty in the morning. So, hey, <laughs> I actually almost did. I'm like, I wonder if Noah's up, and then I was like, no, I got to go to sleep, and then I didn't for like an hour. But it's okay. I actually finished watching a TV show, and I was bawling in my bed uncontrollably. <laughs> it was really weird. What show was it? It's really dumb. Have you ever seen Alexa and Katie? No, never heard of it. So it's on Netflix and it's probably meant for teenagers. But what really resonated with me is the girl in the show, Alexa, is diagnosed with cancer her first year of high school. And it's all about her journey through high school dealing with cancer. And it's like covers four years. Wow. That sounds miserable. No, it's actually amazing. And what's really good about it. Do you ever watch Saved by the Bell? No, but Stacy is the biggest Saved by the Bell fan on earth. Possibly after me, because so am I. And I actually have a friend who named his son Zach after Zach Morris. So that's really weird, but awesome. But (laughs) no, but uh, but one of my favorite characters from the show who was Kelly Kapowski and Zach Morris. Kelly Kapowski is on the show. Her name's Tiffany Thiessen, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. I'm sure you know. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, so she's on the show, which is why I watched it. Um, anyways, but the show just resonated with me as somebody who has an illness and a lot of people don't understand the illness and what I go through. So watching something that was similar to what, again, knock wood, not similar, but similar in the sense that she has an illness and I have an illness. It was a very interesting take on it. And it just really, really, it was very heartwarming. It was actually a great show, honestly. Like I, it's totally for like teenagers and everybody, but it really resonated with me. And anyway, so it ended and I was bawling in my bed. It was good times. Yeah, and then I watched the Kaminsky method to make up for the bowling. I've heard of that, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> that one is Alan Arkin and Michael Douglas, and Kathleen Turner's on it. Oh yeah, I know that is. I've yeah, I've seen the trailer before. It's great. It's really funny. It's great. Nice. So I'd recommend that. Anyway, so I was watching that till two o'clock in the morning, and then I tossed and turned till three thirty. Good time. That sucks. We were busy. It's cool. Like work's been great. We've been busier than we expected, which is great because I got to bring my staff back to work, and they're making money. So that makes me happy. It's just long right. hours right now, but it's like good long. I'm not complaining about my hours. Like I want to make sure that's clear. I'm really enjoying being back to it. It was nice to have a day off. I wasn't sure if we were going to record. So right when you texted me, being like, "Hey, do you have time now?" I was really excited because I was probably not going to lie about four minutes away from either cracking a beer or making a Paloma. It was one of the two. So now I'm going to wait till later. I'm having a coffee instead. Well, I was about four. I'm sorry. I'm finishing the freezy. I was about four minutes away from passing out and taking a nap. (laughs) You know what a Paloma is? No. It is tequila and grapefruit juice. Uh, It's my favorite cocktail. That sounds like it would be sour. Is it sour? Well, it's got the the pop from the grapefruit juice, obviously, but the tequila mixes really well with it. And tequila is sometimes hard to sip, right? It's, like, it's got a very strong flavor. So the strength of the grapefruit juice cuts it well. I just think it's it's my favorite cocktail. I love it. I was literally about, I was like, I've been thinking about them all day today. So after we're done, I'm probably going to have a Paloma. Okay, well, I'm sorry to stop your Paloma for the moment. I'm sorry. No, it's good. We've been, I've been so busy. I've been working crazy hours that it's nice to actually talk to a human being and talk to the, the fumble puck uh, world again, you know? <laughs> well, considering you asked if I wanted to record on Saturday during the game on Friday when I was really angry, I, no. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. that was really not a good time for me. I was, And I woke up yesterday morning. I'm like, I don't want to record. I'm still angry. So, yeah. So. You know, I don't have any neon knee jerks. I think we're all experiencing some neon knee jerk reactions. But what I did want to touch on, the first thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to 
um, the, the Canadians right now is that the thing that I think is really important and that I'm seeing on Twitter and that really resonates with me is there is no one right way to be a fan of this team, of any team, really. You know, like I know that there's a couple of people on on Twitter right now. So like we have uh, the Eagle Dare is John, right? You go that- big, big Bergeron fan. And, you know, he was a little rocky for a while as we all were. And now he, like, he's right back into it. He's like super fandom. You know, he's like, nothing can go wrong. I love this team. It's great. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's really cool. And then you've got like uh, abs coverage. The guy who always put, makes himself look like Elliot Friedman, even though he's not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like fake tweets and his, his whole MO on Twitter is like, he's super negative. He's like, they're not going to win. They're never going to score. And like it's his way of processing the emotions. And I think like both those, extremes and everything in between is totally cool i just think right now there's no i don't hold anything against anybody for how they cheer for the team yeah i agree with you and what's interesting is a lot of people i think are having similar feelings to me which is i'm really proud of where they've come from i do not like the idea of being swept in the stanley cup like final like that really upsets me and irks me and i really hope it doesn't happen and I think in that regard, I'd be somewhat embarrassed that my team got swept in the final. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's bothering me that one. I just we can't be swept. Does that make sense? Just don't- yeah, I, I understand that feeling. The only way there is one scenario, which is already too late, but there is one scenario in which I would have tolerated a Habs getting swept scenario. Uh, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Uh, if we would have swept Vegas. Yep. No, sorry. That's not the way it works. That's not the ultimate loser. Sorry, no, I was trying to see if there was an ultimate loser scenario. Vegas. We had to be swept by Vegas. Yeah, never mind. So no, uh, screw that. I want us to win, obviously. <laughs> I, I can't. I just feel like getting swept in the final when so many people already think we don't belong there. We clearly do belong there. But yeah, just, it's laughable. Anyone who says that now, it, it's just. I know. And I feel like all the Leaf fans who are now coming out of the woodwork are so happy that we're about to be, like, kicked out of the playoffs. Your team couldn't even beat us. Like, Yeah, really? I love that take. Like, bring it on all day, every day. I remember you guys talking all season long, and look at where you are again. You're talking about trading Mitch Marner. You suck. And yesterday, congratulations, Leaf fans. You made it. You had a record. Congrats. <laughs> like, the ultimate record of the most days ever since last winning the Stanley Cup. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. The um, last time the Leafs won a playoff series, 1080p for HGTV still didn't exist. So they are officially the only team in NHL in the NHL that has never had a playoff series win in HD. Well, dude, when that's something on the cup, there was no such thing as colored TV. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's incredible. It's, rid- it's ridiculous. But I don't think Leafs fans understand. I, like, I don't want to talk too much about the Leafs because I don't want to seem bitter, but I just don't think they understand the futility of their own team. I, I don't think they do either. It's crazy. It is so crazy, and it just makes me laugh. And what do you think about that Wayne Simmons signing and Spezza signing? <laughs> so the Spezza signing I love. I think it's great. I I think he's underpaid, if I'm being super honest. I think like he should get the 1.5 mil that – Simmons got last year, but I know that Spets has a class act and he doesn't care about the money. So good, good for him, I guess. But I definitely think he's being underpaid. Wayne Simmons, I think it's a bad signing. It's doubly weird for me because why give him the extra year? What's the point? You only yeah. give him the extra year if you're worried about him walking. Why are you worried about him walking? He was I, bad. I know. That's what I thought too. I was like, that's a strange signing. I know. And it means they're not re signing Thornton for sure then. That's fine. I, want, I don't mind a Jumbo Joe goes to a team where he deserves to win the cup. Yeah, I can I can like Joe Thornton again if he doesn't resign. Exactly, same here. But I, I know what's bothering me. I didn't know you could still trade while the Stanley Cup Finals are still happening. I thought you had yeah, to you can still trade all the time. The trade deadline is only for players that will impact your roster. Uh, so like the Habs could make a trade right now, but it just couldn't be a player that's active or a player that's. Um, going to be at play on our roster so like you could trade minor leaguers and stuff like that no problem there's no technical day you can't trade have you noticed how many quebecers the La- laval rocket are signing yeah obviously intentional i wonder so like this i, I was gonna bring this up because i'm curious about it because there are rumors now that joel bouchard is not resigning right i heard that yeah so maybe this is a play like maybe that's part of the reason maybe this is part of the story maybe he was like i need more quebec talent i want to work with homegrown because he obviously owns and coaches uh, used to coach the uh, the armada right yep so maybe this is them saying hey like we'll give you some control and bring in some nice you know quebecois kids and then i'll let you go if that's the plan 
uh, sorry, if, if that's the plan, I think that's cool if it's to help keep him. But even if it's not the plan to help keep him, I still think it's cool. I love it. I have a question. I asked yeah. this on Twitter. You clearly did not understand what I was saying, or you were just trying to be a douche. I'm not really sure. Probably I mean, a little both. Yeah. Okay, so here's my question. As we all know about the Tampa Bay salary cap and how they are $18 million over cap, which I know is legal, blah, 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 they're cheating. Here's my question. If you could bring in $18 million worth of talent to play on our roster right now, any team, any players, $18 million, who do you bring in? And don't yeah. tell me the crap that you told me on Twitter. So, no. so there's a few things to that. First of all, the most important part is I screenshotted – uh, you know, like I searched your name on Twitter and I screenshotted like the header to select you because it was like 19 tweets in the last hour. And I was like, oh, she's full raging. This is awesome. So <laughs> I saved it, but I was at work, so I couldn't send you because the Wi-Fi at our work doesn't allow us to send pictures easily. I have to like disconnect from the Wi-Fi and I don't have time to stop and do that. So, uh, but I saved the picture and I was waiting for the moment to use it, but it was great. I was like, there's some rage Twitter happening right now. Um, but so first up, if the Habs were going to uh, do something similar, it wouldn't be $18 million because we're already into LTIR like the Tampa Bay Lightning, just not as much. Yeah, right? that's not my question. But this isn't an, an actual – I'm saying if you had $18 million at your disposal, who would you bring in? It doesn't matter about what our, where we actually so are. Just random $18 million. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that okay, – dude, clearly this isn't actually so going like, to happen. That's ever. easy. It's, so it's easy. I, I don't know if it exactly fits, but we can figure it out. It's uh, Connor McDavid and Patrice Bergeron. That's about $18 million right there. Wham, bam. Thank you, man. We're done. You're not taking a defenseman like Petrangelo or Adam Fox? No, we need to score. <laughs> I know we need to score, but we also need to defend. But <laughs> I I, I, You know, the one thing that I'm getting out of this playoff run and even the series, because I know Price hasn't had the strongest series yet, but I am not worried about our goaltending next year if Jake Allen's still on the team. Like, I, I believe in Carey Price in the playoffs now. I'm, I'm sold. And if Marc-Andre Fleury can win the Vezna at, what is he, 36 now? Carey yeah. Price is thirty three. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not worried about it yet. Like we got time. I think like we'll talk off season. You know, after we win the cup on Saturday or whatever. But um, I'm uh, like I don't want to make this an off season talk. But I'm not worried about our goaltending. So I wouldn't address that. I think Eric Gustafsson is awkward. I tried to I tried to buy into him. It didn't work. <laughs> so hold on a second. Wait, you said Patrick Bergeron and McDavid. I had the same two. However, you wouldn't bring in Pasternak. Uh, uh, by the way. To, to any Bruins fan or David Pasternak yeah, or anybody, my condolences. That is so hard and so bad. I'm so sorry. I'm a um, huge David Pasternak fan, and it was heartbreaking hearing that news. Me too. I was. I had tears in my eyes. I felt horrible. Yeah. Um. But uh, I would bring. I would bring in two top notch centers. I would bring in Connor McDavid because he can score a bajillion goals, and I'd bring in Patrice Bergeron because he's maybe he'd teach Phil to know. How about like Matthews or? Uh, I so. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. I, yeah, like I pro, like I'd rather have McDavid than Matthews. Me too. But like, if I had to, if I only got Matthews as a consolation prize, I would. But I would go full Lula Moriello and make him shave. <laughs> Especially that porn stash. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I was just curious because I I meant it like in that way. I didn't mean it like logistically, like figuring out our cap situation. That's not what I meant. Yeah, but, you, with eighteen million dollars, you could probably bring in five players that are really effective. You know. I know. Well, I've been Twitter raging a lot because I'm like really angry when I'm watching these games. So. Do you want to know the one thing that bothers me about this playoff series? How Tampa gets away with murder and nothing gets called ever? No, um, it's, oh. it's uh, very specific. So all playoffs long. And so there was a uh, last game. I felt even more validated about the take. So I'm going to, you know, like I'm cool to talk about it now. Uh, they keep hyping up Patrick Maroon versus Josh Anderson. Yeah, I don't understand why. Yeah. Well, I understand why. It's because Josh Anderson is not a top line player. He's he's a Patrick Maroon. And like, so I was like, doesn't how are you hyping up a matchup between their fourth liner and what should be our top liner? It makes no sense. Our brand new acquired power forward. And you're like, these guys are head to head talents, like comparables. It's crazy to me. And then it was first. Further compounded. So last game, did you hear? Did you see the maroon uh, clip? I did. Yeah, where he's like, "Give as many points as me." That's exactly the point. You know, like, oh the man, if, that, if, that's what you're, if, if this is what you're up against, like, if, if you're talking about your prized forward acquisition matching up against their fourth line, there's an issue. You know? Well, I also think so. Something I notice is John Cooper refuses to put out the Deneau line versus the point line. John right? Cooper's so freaking good. Oh my god. 
I hate him. I hate his smug face. I can't stand him. I adore him now. Every I've year goes by, him. I like him more. I think he's just the best coach in the league by a mile. He, he, I love that he wears heavy metal shirts to his pressers. Like, <laughs> I just, like, this guy's a dude. I used to think he looked like Michael Keaton a little bit when he first started. He does, and he's so smug. Like, wipe that smirk off your face, buddy. And they don't get called for anything. No one. They're getting away with murder on the ice, and they get called for nothing. Yeah, but, I, like, I'm over the whole ref thing. Like, that's old news to me now. Like, it, it is what it is. It's never going to change. And, you know, like... I, I, at this point, it sucks to say, but you just have to play through it. There's nothing else you can do about it. I know, but like it's, I mean, today at practice, you practice the power play. We don't get power plays. Why are we yeah, practicing? Did you it? see the second power play unit? Uh, the one with Armia on it? Stahl, Armia, Gallagher, Anderson, Weber. Okay, well, they're never going to score, but it's asking for a shorthanded goal to be scored. It's <laughs> absolutely outlandish that Kokaniemi's not on a power play. Okay, wait, KK's not on the top unit? I thought he was. No. Well, I don't think Ducharme likes KK. Can we be honest? Because he was benched in the third period of the last game, too. That is exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he clearly does not like KK. But if, whatever. I just. Luke okay. Richardson for coach, baby. <laughs> yeah. He's so cute, Luke Richardson. He is a good looking guy. Is he going to be your, your hottie of the week? Well, name it now. He's my hottie of the week. Luke That's Richardson. a very good choice. He is a dream boat. He's a good looking guy. He's he really no is. Kirk Muller, but you know. Nobody's Kirk Muller except Kirk Muller. Yeah, I think I, I wasn't a huge yeah. like I wasn't a huge proponent of him or Burroughs, right? But I, I really like how they held their composure and how they ran stuff during the, the, the playoffs, right? Like I, I I think they've changed my mind about them. So, you know, hey, there's there's I like being wrong. So I, I'm happy to say it. I was wrong about those two. I'm just worried that I don't know if Ducharme is the coach for the next five years. That, I mean, he's going to be. I don't know if he should be the coach for the next five years. And I'm having a lot of iffy moments, especially. I mean, this was Luke Richardson. Who would you have put on in the four on three? Because. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh Maybe a right hand shot with an elite shot. So, you know, Cole Caulfield and maybe an elite passing left hand shot in KK and then maybe a puck moving defenseman in either Gustavson or Petrie uh, and then someone for the net front or who's just versatile like Tyler Toffoli. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I wouldn't heard like Shea Weber and Phil Deneau and, you know, like. Arturi Lekkinen. Yeah. Like, was he, I feel like you're trying to play defense on that power play. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't That's understand. John Tortorella hockey right there playing not to lose. Like. Yeah, on your power play when it's four on three, it was ridiculous. I think I think the the, the challenges with this team are a little more roster based right now. Like I feel like they're they're a, it's a good roster, but it's not the roster that we need to really play Ducharme style. So if you want to keep Ducharme as the coach, you need some of more talent. So like you need a ta- roster with a little more talent. The thing I keep going back to, and I tweeted it out the other day. The sign that John Cooper is an exceptional coach is the amount of blind passes the Tampa Bay Lightning can make to nowhere, and they connect all the time. Everybody is always in their position. Nobody ever misses an assignment, and they have the skill to execute that plan also. You know, like, how many times does Montreal pass to nowhere and it gets iced and it goes flying, right? Or it goes to the Tampa Bay Lightning stick every single time. Yeah, but the fact that, like, I challenge anyone, watch those, watch this Tampa team play. They always connect. Always. It's incredible. They just dump the puck behind them. They they fly, fly into the side, and it's tape to tape backwards. It's it's so impressive, and that only happens when your coach is, knows what he's doing. Uh, to me, it's aggravating as hell, and I'm not a fan. I hate them. I want them to lose. Yeah, like, losing sucks, and that's why I hate it, right? But, like, if I was watching this, like, if I was watching Tampa Bay play Dallas, like, last year or whatever, you know, like yeah. I would be thoroughly impressed in enjoying the product that they put on the ice. Like they play fun, exciting, good hockey. And I don't think that there's any downside right now to enjoying the ride a little bit and knowing our guys are seeing this and learning from it, you know? I'm hoping they are because I mean Nick Suzuki is such a stud. I love this kid, man. Like Yeah, but they're a- missing something on that line. Well, you know what I noticed is and I you know how much I adore Cole Caulfield. He is getting bamboozled in this series he He has to work way too hard for his chances and he's also just getting like ran off the puck every five seconds they keep pushing him off the puck he does not maintain control of that puck at all and so suzuki's that guy right because he's like a a tree trunk like he's thick i love him on that line i think tyler to is the wrong guy for that line now even though they've produced up until this point we need someone who can thread a needle 
to either Suzuki or KK uh, or Caulfield because they can both shoot. If that person's KK, that's cool. Like, I think that's possible, but I don't think it's Toffoli right now. I think we're missing some opportunity with Cole Caulfield because of the way that line is set up. And I think Nick Suzuki fits on it. I don't know if Tyler Toffoli does. I would actually take Gallagher off of that top line with Deneau also, um, solely because of one reason. Gallagher's body, as we can see, is like not doing so well right now. Like, look at what happened to his head and everything, which, by the way, Sorgachev wasn't fined for that, really. Well, Gallagher initiated it. That's the problem, right? Like, I get that. I don't, I'm not mad about that call. He, Sergachev literally came up to him. Gallagher was fighting with someone else, and Sergachev came up to him and dumped him on his head without a helmet. Yeah, but Gallagher also threw a punch. Like, it, that's just that's just a scrum Gallagher started by going hard. And I'm not upset. That's like the one thing I don't like the result of it, but I, I get a Gallagher probably had it coming at that point in time. You, know? you don't dump someone on the ice on their head. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. Yeah, but if Gal- Gallagher would do the same to them, he would. So like, and I wouldn't be okay with Gallagher doing it to them. Well, then we can't be okay with them running the goalie all the time. You know, like he's he's a dirty player. Let's call a spade a spade. You know. Yes, but he still should not be dumped on the ice head first. I'm sorry, that's like not yeah, okay. Yeah, but you know, like there's a there's yes, but there's also in this one there's a degree of you, you got what you deserve there, guy. You know, and he's fine. It's 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 fine. Everything's okay. You know, like he didn't yeah. get hurt, so. Hopefully, I truly lucky him probably did ramming into. Like, I don't even. I don't even think you take Gallagher off that Dano line right now because, n- well, no, because the line can't friggin' do anything. They like they can't score. So like, why would I take Gallagher's inability to score and put that on another line to ruin that line? Well, because maybe Gallagher will have the ability to score if he's with KK. No, he's, that line's he's not absolutely garbage right now. Like I get he's the moral leader of this team. He's one of the worst players on our team this series. It's I bad. Agree. It's so bad. Keep him in the defensive role because he's not able to do anything else. Okay, but then how come the KK line never cycles? Have you noticed the KK line? Josh never- Anderson's terrible at hockey. I've been saying it for a year. He sucks. I know you're not his biggest fan. I know. I bought in. I gave him a shot. I, I bought in a little more. You know, like I was letting it happen. But he's the most predictable player on our team. And him and Gallagher play the same style. They're just different sizes. So you know exactly what they're going to do. So it's easy to defend. It's They're one-trick ponies. And it's not a good trick. Shouldn't maybe the coaches work on them to discover more tricks in their sleeves? Well, so, like, we're not going to talk off-season, I suppose, or until next, like, you know, a couple weeks or whatever. But when we talk off-season, yeah, we're going to have to address that. And I would... Uh, like you can't come back with that right wing like th- those three at right wing like to good he stays the other two like you can't come back with all three of them and expect better results they they kill plays those two yeah it's very sad anyway so what are your prediction for tomorrow night game i don't four. make predictions for playoff games you know that i haven't made a prediction yet the whole run yeah i know but like at this point noah okay fine Let's my prediction is a uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs and uh, a high probability of stella artois <laughs> and are you keeping with your superstitions or have they all gone out the window because they're clearly not working? I am I have held on to the one superstition that mattered the most. Every single game that I watch, I have. So I have two pieces to uh, my experience that I need to have. One is I have a little Yuppie doll, uh, like a little plushie uh, right. that we got for Ivy before she was born. It was uh, like a, her pre-being born present. Like, it was like the day she was born birthday present. Uh, okay. Yuppie sits with me for every game. I was working on the Friday game and he was sitting in my office at work. So it was great. The other is I have a couple of different jerseys, but my most recent jersey my dad got for me. It's really special. So it's a uh, it's a reverse retro jersey, which is gorgeous. And it has my name on the back and 85 the year I was born in. And I think it's just the coolest thing in the world. So oh. like I've never had a jersey with my name on it. And like I didn't expect it at all as a gift. Like my, my parents are always really cool with gifts, but this was just like next level. Really awesome. I was blown away. So uh, so I, I actually keep that like draped over me the whole time when I watch the game so at work on Friday is actually draped over my office chair so I've got those two things I'm good to go that's all I need to make sure my experience is positive okay well that's good I stopped eating the donuts because why and I stopped eating out at the same restaurants because none of that crap worked not eating out taking out food from the restaurants and um yeah pretty much my mom came over we lost my mom stayed home we lost my mom came over we lost yeah so basically <laughs> everything i've done is not work so meh. well we're a team built for the playoffs <laughs> apparently we just can't get through the fourth round of the Tampa Bay lightning i just really hope they don't get swept the only thing that bugs me i've been saying that i probably said the only thing that bugs me like 12 times there's a lot of things that bug me obviously <laughs> 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 I, I, I just find it really hard to be mad at Tampa. 
and I hate the story. I hate repeat cup champions. I, I hate when that happens. I hate that they got to put out a roster that high over the cap, whatever. But I watch them and I'm just like, they're just that good. They're really just an amazing team. I hate saying it, but they're, they're, they're the best team in the league right now. And it's really hard to argue that at all. Do you think Andre Vasilevsky is a cyborg? Uh, I wonder because his eyes are really, really yeah. like, I think he might, I, I don't know if cyborg's not the word. The word is a uh, replicant from Blade Runner. Like he's Rutger Hauer in Blade Runner. I've never seen that. So I'll go with, okay. You're never going to see it. Cause it's a goof, like nerdy sci-fi movie, but it is a Harrison Ford classic. Ooh, Harrison Ford. He's awesome. He was in Blade Runner. He's the star of Blade Runner. Wait a second. Is Blade Runner not what I think it is? I thought Blade Runner was like, hold on. <laughs> I thought Blade Runner, Blade Runner was an 80s Snipes, sci-fi right? movie. Oh, who, what am I thinking about? That is like Wesley Snipes. Demolition Man? Blade? Oh, you think of Blade the Vampire? Oh, not the same thing. <laughs> but they apparently Marvel is uh, rebooting Blade, and there are rumors, because now that Marvel has the property back, they're going to make it good. There's rumors that Wesley Snipes might reprise. Oh, so maybe that's where I was going. And it starts with Blade and this is Blade Runner. So technically it's the same thing, right? No. Yeah, sure. (laughs) (laughs) My bad. Well, interesting. Okay, I've never even heard of... I've heard of Blade Runner, but I always thought it was Blade. Hey, it came out the year I was born. Look at that. Um, Great movie. So so we're we're game four is tomorrow. Yeah. I have to get a chance to leave everything on the ice and go for it. I don't question for a minute their, their... care factor like they care they're playing their heart out Corey perry in particular is playing his heart out i wanted to make sure i mentioned that it's impressive i am still the biggest Corey perry fan i would resign him for sure i just think he has no i think he has nothing left i don't know he like he looks like he's got a lot left well not a lot left he looks like he can still play right oh, but like here's the thing is if you sign him next year I meant for there's the no way he goes through waivers right unless he pulls the thing again where he says don't claim me but if i'm Corey perry i, I probably have improved my stock a little bit. I can get a little bit more money somewhere else. It all depends on if he really wants to play in Montreal or not. That's the key. I would resign him. But then your your right wing is Gallagher, Anderson, Toffoli, Perry. That is, aside from Corey Perry, sorry, aside from Tyler Toffoli, it's a very not versatile line. Okay. I think we have too many right-hand shots on our team. We have way too many right-hand shots. It's crazy. Okay, but so then think about it this way. Who are we going to get on a fourth liner that's better than Corey Perry? One of our fourth liners. Like, I, I could go, like, Jacob De La Rose. <laughs> he doesn't score. No, but do we need our fourth line to be scoring? Jake Evans will drive some offense on that line. You know, like, Joel Armia. Oh my God, Joel Armia is also a right-handed wing, right, right wing. Oh, my God. He might, be gone. he might be gone. He, yeah, but I, I don't know. I could picture Bergevin resigning him. I would, personally. What about Lekkinen? Lekkinen might be gone, too. Yeah, I hope yeah. not, but I can imagine it. Like, I think, think Lekkinen now is exactly in the Lars Eller stage of his career. I think Arpin Basu said that the other day, actually, so I feel like I should give credit before I talk about this. I've thought it for a long time, but he beat me to saying it out loud, so I need to give credit. That, like, remember the longest time everyone was mad at Lars Eller because he wasn't scoring all the time, and then we realized too late that he's just a third liner who's really good at being a third liner you I know like the whole time and i was down with that <laughs> yeah me too you know like you know how i feel about lars eller i adore him uh yeah, but lekin is kind of the same where he had that hot rookie year where he put up 18 goals and everyone's like oh my god this guy is the next big thing like i got a little bought into that hype too obviously because i'm a big fan of the player i've been a fan since before he was drafted and um He's not. He's just a third liner who's defensively aware, won't chip in a lot of offense, but, you know, he's good at what he does. If we accept that, then, yeah, he's a bottom six forward that I would resign, you know? Right. However, Jake Evans has never been a scorer in his career. So you can't really expect Jake Evans to be that much of a scorer. His most goals ever in a season. Okay, well, it was in in the GFL, so, like, doesn't really count. But... He's not a scorer. He's an assist guy. Well, let's be absolutely clear. This needs to be crystal clear to everybody. We're not looking for people on our fourth line to score goals. The problem isn't that our fourth line doesn't score. It's that our first line doesn't score. If we fix the scoring on the top two lines, we produce enough offense from our bottom six that it's fine. Like, we have no concerns about our bottom six. We really need... We need someone to thread a needle to Cole Coughlin, and we need that dental line to produce offense or not be the top line anymore. 
Well, they're not the top line. They've been relegated to the third line, apparently. Well, no, uh, that's absolute garbage because he played. They play the most minutes, so it's not true. Like I don't well, care where you mark them on the sheet; that means nothing. Well, they shouldn't be our top line because we can't rely on them. They are so defensive minded; they aren't scoring, and that's what I'm saying. Take Gallagher off that line and let him try to score because he used to be able to do it. I understand he's not playing well this season, this series, but I mean. You can't De- – Deneau score has one goal in the playoffs and, like, three assists. And I understand his job is to shut down, but you also ha- – I've been saying this for years. You also have to counter with some offensive production, which he does not. Lackanen is not a scorer, and Gallagher that, – That's Gallagher's job, and he's not doing his job straight up. There's no other way to ta- – like, Gallagher put up 30 goals normally with that line, and he can't do it anymore. So that's the – like, Deneau didn't change. It's Gallagher who changed, you know? <laughs> I think they all changed. I think they all just were fo- were tasked with defense only, and just that's your focus. I no, because they don't believe in that. Like they don't they haven't changed their style of play. It's just not working. You know, like people figured out Gallagher, and maybe right. not having to tar matters. You know, like who would you put in tomorrow night? Would you switch anybody? Yeah, I'd make all kinds of moves, but they're not going to. So whatever. Like I, I, I would put Tatar in at this point in time. You right. know. A uh, good opportunity before he leaves to boost his value with one big game, you know. Uh, right. I think I would take out Gustafsson only because he's not on the power play, so he's officially useless, right? Yep. Uh, and I don't know, like, I, I think there's an opportunity to put in someone who can, uh, like a wild card, like like a Lucas Vedemo or something, or like a, a Jesse Olenin. I don't know, like... What do you got to lose? What do you have to lose right now? You know, nothing. We're, That's we're, it. we're still playing with house money. We still have nothing to hang our heads about. So why not just go out with a bang? And see what happens. You know. So who would your random shop be? Go. The person you're going to put in tomorrow night that's going to win the game for us. Go. Who is it? Uh, well, it's not going to happen, but I would love to see Jesse Olin and play a game. Okay. I mean, I don't think he's healthy, but Ryan Paling would be the other obvious choice for me. He's not healthy, but yeah. Yeah. So then it would okay, be Olin. My call is. Norlander comes over and scores the game winning goal tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you're speaking my language. No, Caulfield's going to have the game winning goal tomorrow. Book it. I just think like Cole Caulfield still has a lot to learn. Me too. You, you know, and, and that's fine. He's a kid. Like it really doesn't bother me at all. But he, I definitely don't like how hard he's working for his chances. Like him, like him and him and Suzuki and Tafoli, they all work their butts off. And I don't think that should stop their effort. Is right. They're you know like they're a good line. I just think the one little tweak missing is that we need someone with a lethal pass that's a left-hand shot to, to finish off that line. Like a Jonathan Drouet with a left-handed shot? Y- yes, absolutely. But you, you know who I'm really thinking of. You know yeah. who should be on this team right now. Max Domi. Oh, yes. He told me that. Yeah, don't make me cry. Ugh. Imagine we could have Max Domi instead of Josh Anderson right now. Oh, my God. He, Max Domi can thread a needle. He makes dangerous passes. He's known for it. He's always been good at it. And he's finally got the finisher. You know, imagine yeah. Domi, Suzuki, and Caulfield. Oh my God. <laughs> That'd be a very small line, but they'd be great. Who cares? And and like Suzuki is not small. Like no, he's, I'm talking he's about 11. He's like average height, but he's he's 210. He's like, he's thick. I'm talking thick about two C's. I'm saying <laughs> Domi and uh, Caulfield to be such a sort, but yeah. Small, not short, small. Who cares? You know who one of the shortest teams in the league is for forwards? The Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, because their defense are trees, man. Yeah, but their forwards are tiny. Even Stamkos isn't big. Point's not big. Kucherov's not big. You know? Kucherov is so dirty. Did you know that? Yes, I watched a lot of Columbus Blue Jackets hockey, and I've seen the playoffs against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I know exactly how dirty Nikita Kucherov is. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't realize he was such a dirty piece of liver. I just think we have... We're a very dirty team also. So I like, I just think we have to like recognize that and you know, like every team is dirty in the playoffs. I don't think any team has been particularly more dirty than we have. I just don't think anything's called properly. So whatever, the refs are all stupid. The refs are horrendous. Oh my god. Horrendous. Anyways. So- I, I want to swing us around the league. There's only a two, couple of things to talk about. There's something to talk. What else is happening in the league? <laughs> Mark Andre Flory won the Vesna. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Uh at his age, winning a Vesna off a great performance as a tandem with Robin Leonard. That gives me confidence in Carey Price. I'm good. Can we just, wait, hold on, just one second. There's nothing else happening around the league because we're one of the last two teams remaining. <laughs> that is not true. So good. Um, no, there's so good. There's stuff happening. Duncan no, Keith is going to get traded to Edmonton. I know, but talking about playing hockey, we're the only teams left playing hockey is us and Tampa. 
That's amazing. It's that's so cool. cool. It's so cool. That, sorry, I had to just say that. Uh, no, yes, so cool. Duncan Keith, Keithy Cheethies is going to Edmonton. I saw that. Yeah, I'm so excited. I hope it tanks Edmonton's chance to win anything. It's really exciting because Duncan Keith is not good at hockey anymore. He used to be amazing, though. Yeah, yeah, Con Smythe winner. I love Duncan Keith. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. Bergevin isn't all up in that. I think he's trying to avoid the Blackhawks right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. We'll talk about that another day. Yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Joel Erickson X signed. Did you see that yes, signing? I did see that signing. Uh, 5.25 mil a year on a long-term deal. Do you know why that's relevant to us? Uh, Phil Deneau. Exactly. So Erickson Eck is a Phil Deneau that puts up more offense and a little less defense, but he's still very good defensively. Uh, so that kind of gives us a baseline for Phil Deneau. So yeah. you have to figure that's the range. So you figure 4.5 to 5.5 would be Deneau's range on like a four or five year deal. I would hope for under five, like 4.2 would be enough. Yeah. So I don't think 4.2 would happen. I'd love that. I feel like, I feel like 5.25, like exactly the same as Eric Sinek might make sense based on the age, the UFA years, et cetera. There's no way we should be paying that much money to a third line center who will have to be a third line center. Sorry. I pass. Can't do it. Who replaces yeah. him? Evans paling. Don't care. Not even close though. So you're, you're, so you're going to be taking a step down at center. Not necessarily. You don't know what Evans can do in that position. You I know, know nothing about hockey because I predicted so many things that were wrong this year. Um, well, same here, but I'm just saying, like, I mean, we don't know. We really don't know. No, so you're saying you're willing to roll the dice on them replacing Phil Deneau? I would. Or finding someone cheaper in the UFA market. Absolutely. There, there will not be a cheaper person to provide that same value. That's the point I'm making. This Erickson Eck contract sets the market for that type of a player. Yes, but he wanted more than five. We offered him five for six years. He said no. He's not going to take 5.25 for four years. Like, it's the same thing. He's not going to take it. And we can't offer anything close to that. We don't have cap space. Even if we lose, let's say, 15 or $16 million of cap space and we go into this, like, UFA season with that, we have to get a puck-moving defenseman, number one. We need somebody who's amazing because look what's been happening to our team. There's not going to be a lot available except for shaking off people with salary cap issues. So we're going to have $15 million to play with, you know? And we need to, I mean, so depending on who we lose in the expansion draft, I, I dude, I, I know you love Phil Deneau. I get it. You know, he's not my favorite. I understand what he brings to the team defensively. I agree. We need a third line center. You don't pay a third line center $5 million in a flat cap era. I'm sorry. You don't do it. Do you know what we really need? What? A Chris Kunitz. We need Sidney Crosby and Chris Kunitz. Though. Well, Cole Caulfield's are Sidney Crosby. We need yeah. his Chris Kunitz. We need the guy that just has Rain Man chemistry with him. Would that be Jack Eichel by any chance? <laughs> no, because I like Suzuki on that line. I need. We need a freaking. We need two offensive left wingers. That's what we need. I'm tired of all the right-handed shots in this team. It's dumb. We need some left-handed Is shots. Isn't Caulfield a left winger? He's playing on the left wing right now because we have so many right-hand shots that everyone's playing on their off wings. Okay. But him and Toffoli switch on that spot, right? Like, but they're both natural right wingers. They should be playing right wing. So then who would be the ideal left wing for him besides Max Domi? So I don't know if this is the case, but I'm interested to see if they think about it. But Code Kanyemi? He's a center. Well, he doesn't have to be a center. He plays better on the center, though. We've discovered that. No, he was bad for most of the year. He just turned it on the playoffs again. Okay. But why, why not? why not stack him onto a top line, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, if he didn't do so many uh, mountains of drugs, I would be super interested in Evgeny Kuznetsov. Yeah, I'm scared about him. Yeah, yeah. he just, like, I just don't think he'd fit on the team because of the character issues he's got, right? But, like, if Washington, because Washington wants to dump him, if they'd retain salary, you get him, you move him from center to the wing so he has less responsibility, he can just be more creative. I feel like that's a very good opportunity for him to feed some passes, you know, like... I think Montreal would be the worst city in the world for him, however. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's a good one. Cause but I'm thinking of the type of player. Like that's the type of player I, I think we should be looking at, you know? We're still going to – we're going to off-season stuff right now. We, we, we shouldn't be doing this right, right now. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Well, we can as of tomorrow. Oh. Okay, here's, here's my hot take. Yeah. Hockey's a lot of fun, and you should enjoy it no matter what, however you enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Here's my dumb, t- dumb hot take. Okay. Hockey's a lot of fun and you should enjoy it however you can. Better? <laughs> that's that's very fair. Uh, and I have my dumb take that I want everyone else to avoid because I saw it and I thought it was it, it made me laugh a lot, but it was still pretty dumb. Okay. Uh, that picture of the guy in a Leafs outfit at the Habs game. 
Yeah. And someone was like, did this guy really do this? Like show up in a Leafs outfit? And someone retweeted it saying, uh, this guy's probably having more fun than everyone else who's there right now. And that's totally not true. Like, why would that be a thing? Like, you, you didn't, you'd get enough shade and Freud watching Montreal lose after your own team was completely futile. I don't know. It was a dumb take, but it was but funny. What's, what's funny is somebody paid like $11,000 for that ticket to wear a Leaf jersey. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't $11,000. <laughs> I, you know what? I hope it was for his sake. Don't wear a Leaf jer- jersey to our barn when we're playing Tampa. Come on. That's a jerk move. It's like wearing a Nordiques jersey. Like, get out of here. Especially because, like, there's people like me who want to go who can't actually get tickets. So don't go and wear a different jersey when you're not even a fan of our team. That pisses me off. Somebody else, another take I saw. Somebody else. So you're suggesting we do the Tampa model where only fans of the Tampa Bay Lightning can go? To our games and only we can go. Don't wear other teams' jerseys too. I don't care if you're a fan of another team. Don't wear their jerseys. So Tampa doesn't allow people to wear other teams' jerseys. That's disgusting. That I don't agree with. But no, that this year I don't know if they did that. They did that a couple years ago. But something else that I thought of that somebody tweeted us saying how this is his fourth playoff game this year. I can't get tickets to one game and you're going to four. That upsets me. Well, they have the money to throw around, you know. No, I I think they, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they did, but I mean, come on. It should be, even for you guys, the season ticket holders, I know somebody who went to a bunch of games. You only got picked once. So it's set up that you can't win it multiple times. Once you win the lottery once, you can't win it again. Are you sure? Because yeah, so we, we won it for the first two rounds and we declined the first two rounds. And then oh. we won it for the final and said, yes, because we declined, we were still allowed to participate. Okay, well, that makes that is fair, but That's for the fair, people, yes. but for the people who are spending a fortune, like fine, if you want to blow all your money, like I don't want to pay my mortgage to go and watch a game. I'm sorry, I can't afford that. But I really think that people who have gone to four games already, come on, let other people go. You know, especially if they're going legitimate ways and they're not buying the eleven thousand dollar tickets. Yeah, I get that. The only thing I'd say about that is I think we should direct our blame to the government for the capacity and not the people. Like if someone's willing to pay, I don't I can't be mad at them for that. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. Like, well, hopefully not. That. I well, hopefully not. Yeah. I, look, I understand. I'm angry at Francois Legault, honestly. It's not him. It's Quebec. It's health. It's not even him. Well, he's the premier. If he can't muscle, like the whole point is he's supposed to use his bully pulpit to get what the people want, right? Well, I don't so, like him. So if this is going to get him out of power, I'm really okay with it. Officially but, blaming Francois Legault. Okay, then I'm totally down with that. <laughs> However, I have to say though, so one thing that's really stupid, first of all, if you want people to be able to go, make sure they're all double vaccinated. You want to fill the arena or do half full, make sure it's double vax people over two weeks past. That's what you want. That's what I believe should be done. And stop with, if you're going to be outside, outside the Bell Center, wear a mask. How hard is it to wear a mask? Don't be stupid. Wear a mask. The Delta variant is terrifying. Wear a mask. People aren't afraid of it anymore. It's over, right? Like COVID is over in everyone's mind and and that will not change. It's not over. And that's what's scary is it's not over at all. Yeah, but like I, 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 I'm not even mad at the people on the street anymore. The government has made them fed up. I, it's all the government's fault right now because they've mixed messages. They've they fumbled everything. Like here in Ontario, it was a gong show for the longest time, right? People are fed up of it, and they're telling the government, "Hey, you suck. We're not going to listen to you." I don't think it's the, a smart thing to do, but I get it. I get it. You know, like yeah, it, it sucks, but I get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to be responsible for your, like to help other people. Well, because they've gone through a year and a half of this. And most of these people haven't even seen someone have a case yet. Right. Like to them, it's still a boogeyman. Well, I've seen a lot of people with cases and it's very scary. And I had a friend who lost half her hair because of this thing. So yes, but that's where your feelings come from. They haven't experienced that. So they don't have that fear. Right. That's, that's what, that's what it is. They should check it out. And you want to hear something else just to leave this, this podcast on a super creepy note. The Delta variant is causing black fungus to grow inside your body. It's really creepy. Go check it out. Wow. <laughs> That's so, wild. Wear a mask. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> wear a mask. Save lives. Save other people's lives, not just your own. Anyway. All right. I think that's it. So we got a big day tomorrow. Yeah, clearly I'm on an angry, I'm an angry Ashley mode today. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you have to beat 19 tweets in an hour tomorrow. I do that every time we watch the game, do I not? I don't know. I just, I, it stood out like a sore thumb. So I, I'll, I'll send you the screenshot after we're done recording. I, I saved it. I don't normally tweet. I don't think I normally tweet that much. Do I? I don't know. I guess but I'm <laughs> angry. I was really angry during the last couple games. I've been really, really pissy. I, I really guess. have been nothing but smiling. Like I can't, nothing can bring me down watching this team play right now. I love every second of it. I think it's so cool. 
I love it too. And I'm really, really proud of them. I always want to reiterate that, how I'm super proud of them. And I love what they did. I love that they proved everybody wrong. I love that they believe in themselves. And I'm really, really proud of them. I just really don't like Tampa. Yeah. They're like, for me, it's Toronto, LA and Tampa are the three teams I hate the most. Like, okay. I'm, not, I'm not enjoying this part at all. So me neither. I see that I did apparently tweet 19 times in the last hour. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and weird. Um, awesome. I'm going to go either crack a beer or make myself a Paloma or do both of those things because I've had a long week and I deserve this. You do. And so do the Habs. So we'll talk later on in the week or next weekend, I assume, sometime soon. Everybody follow us, subscribe to our podcast. I'll be a lot calmer once this playoff run is over. Maybe, maybe not. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Sorry about the angry Ashley moments. I'm having a rough week. What can I say? You can check us out on all of social media platforms at Fumble Puck Pod. And of course, you can subscribe to our podcast at Fumble Puck Pod or however it comes up on all of your podcast applications. If you have any comments, let us know. And as always, go Habs go. Woo!